Good morning, traders. Ever the adventure in the markets. And as always, bringing you the details of information fundamentally and, of course, into the charts in just a minute. There we go. So, as always, let me hand you over to the fundamental aficionado, <laughs> Daniele. Good morning. <laughs> hey, hey, good morning. What's up, Kiran? Stuck What's up, Coach? Hey, good morning, you. Coach. As always. <laughs> yes, yes, uh, yeah. So, um, yeah, uh, another interesting week in the markets. So, uh, or ahead of us, lots of, uh, as Kiran said, lots of fundamental news coming up. Lots of uh, economic data coming up after that, um, yeah, after that Thanksgiving holiday. So, um, yeah, as usual, let's, or before we actually kick it off right here, again, quick reminder, we have our Future State Trader Education Program coming up in January. So, uh, if you're uh, ready to take your trading to your next level, then, uh, yeah, check, out, check it out on trader-dynamics.com. And uh, yeah, I mean, hopefully we will well, be working uh, in January that, together. Without and the show, um, actually, I mean, it's never really been a better time to start, you know, investing in yourself. I mean, what's coming? Uh, yeah, anyways, I, 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 with that, I didn't mean to cut you off, but it, not only trying to shill, but also kind of putting it in perspective because what we teach, yes, it's, it's day trading related, but actually it allows you to learn a perspective on the market that the, the majority of people are not actually teaching. Um, and not only that, a perspective on, on the market where you forget that the actual person sitting at the computer is a big, big factor in the game. And working with, uh, with, with uh, Dr. Hoffman, um, leading psychologist, she's actually, I mean, uh, you see big, big firms like S&P Capital uh, dealing with Dr. Steinberger um, and from a from a from a psychologist's perspective she's exact i mean the 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 how would you call it the the research in the field is is the same you know so uh, <laughs> the same level so if you want to get a, and like i i said to a, a guy who was asking me about it recently um i said the close it, it might seem like a lot of money you know four thousand dollars obviously is a considerable price point or whatever it is three something something um the closest thing I could find in my career so far is actually the um, the Van Tarp Institute, and I believe that goes from twenty five thousand dollars to forty thousand dollars for what we're teaching. Uh, I know it might be a little bit misleading to say, "Oh no, we're we're very day trading now." Don't get me wrong; we're extremely extremely focused on the day trading side of things. And as we grow, of course, um, um, certain other additionals are going to come into this uh, program that we have, obviously. Nevertheless, if you can, uh, basically our, our, our motivation is if you can learn to navigate the space and yourself mainly in a very, very high intense, high speed environment, what you do then in the high time frames is like, I don't know, <laughs> going to kindergarten <laughs> or, you know, going back to, to play school or whatever it may be. So just to keep that in mind, uh, while, while you got me on it, I just, something some some divine power came upon me to kind of get into that a little bit deeper um, for people. Yeah, yeah, that is true. That is very much true. And I mean, you you had a session recently. Um, I mean, from time to time, the emotional beast just kicks in, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, it's 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 at the moment when you are sitting in front of the screen, it's tough. Like you're to be aware of it. I mean, we practice those those um, those uh, yeah, basically those um, techniques. To be aware of of the emotions kicking in and so on but from time to time i mean yeah i mean wh what you what you told me um with 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 working with her directly recently i mean it's just yeah gives you a totally different perspective and um yes. i mean i don't know any any other <laughs> resource which uh, which has that so um yeah see the thing like is the, every uh, as you evolve um you know this this game is the game of forever learning you know it's 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 life a uh, learning uh, um, career um there's certain things that you kind of get stuck on let's say uh, from a personal perspective and you try and you think to yourself you know oh no i've got this you know i've got it i'm doing everything you know i i know i can i can work this out myself and then you say you know okay let's let's just see if i'm right on this matter and we've got that resource so so thanks to hannah so so easily available 
um, it's like okay, let let's see, let's see a different perspective, and uh, uh, just talk about it. And you go in, you kind of explain your process, and then there's this kind of feedback, I guess, is one way of putting it. And mm-hmm. it's like, hey, you know, I just I never thought of looking at it like that. <laughs> you know, it's like yes. you get these kind of aha moments because obviously, as much as we like to think we know ourselves internally, there are certain behavioral patterns that the human animal uh, um, goes through and they may not be able to recognize these patterns we'll say as they unfold because you know you've, you've got a tendency again especially in, in in the game like trading and things like that you can have tendencies to lie to yourself convince yourself of things that are not there not real whatever it may be to fit your narrative you know there's so much in the game of, of, of um, um, understanding the we'll say the the prehistoric mind or what would you call it the caveman mind or whatever way you want to look mm-hmm. at it um and that even though it may see, seem simple it's like whoa okay okay as you evolve my, my particular case uh, as a reason it was something to, uh, something to do with sizing up was it was a big issue mm-hmm. trying to get on bigger size and, and dealing with that I mean, the, you know as you evolve you'll go through different phases from a psychological process um and, and just having these little things that kind of triggered certain responses we'll say and not realizing and saying, you know, no, I've got it, I've got it. And, and, and this kind of repetitive process ca- kind of cropping up again. And it, it was a lot to do with, um, for, for me personally, it was a lot, a lot to do with personal experience of uh, um, expecting something to happen because it should. <laughs> again, I'm kind of getting off on a tangent mm-hmm. here without getting into too much of the detail. I don't want to give it away. But a uh, long story short, it was it was a, a, a extremely, extremely... Um, simple solution and yet i don't think it could have ever I, I could have ever come to the conclusion without that actual um you know professional help you know so mm-hmm. uh, interesting very very interesting yeah uh, and also seeing it from a scientific yeah. or having the scientific spin on it yes also, the research like to, behind yes, it. yes the yes. research so what we as traders we we're just looking at the markets and and so on but uh, yeah, as you said, we're going off on a tangent. I mean, yeah, <laughs> you know what you can find us. So, so um, anyways, um, let's uh, um, let's keep it uh, let's keep it with the markets now at this moment in time. Um, Oops! But, but you and see, I just oh, left the camera on you for the whole time there we're like, as well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oops! Anyways, okay, okay. So let's kick it off right here with a quick look at the last trading week, which was, um, as mentioned, shortened due to the Thanksgiving holiday. But still a a couple of key things actually took place. I mean, let's first start it off with the U.S. stocks, which, um, yeah, marched higher on the week. Um, The S&P 500, yeah, closed higher 1.53% and the NQ 0.72% respectively. Um, I mean, it was a relatively slow week overall, I'd say. Um, not only because of the holidays, but also because, yeah, everybody was waiting for the um, yeah, FOMC meeting minutes protocol, which was released on Wednesday. And um, yeah, which basically showed a, uh, that a substantial um, yeah, majority of the Fed officials indeed support a slowing down of what is, yeah, as we know now, the most aggressive monetary policy tightening campaign in decades. And yeah, some of the uh, policymakers even warned of the risk that those current excessive interest rate hikes um, yeah, could even exceed what was required to bring the inflation back to the 2% target. So now, usually it is the case that um, those economic effects of um, yeah, rate hikes do, do not manif- manifest itself yeah, immediately. It usually takes a bit of time um, until those um, yeah, policy effects or policy changes um, yeah, arrive in the, in the economy. And that's also why many Fed officials um, suggested downshifting to yeah only 50 basis point rate rises as soon as the ne- in the next meeting in December instead of the back to back 75 basis point rate hikes um, from the last four meetings and um, yeah as the monetary policy yeah, campaign enters what they called a new phase so uh, yeah let's see what happens but i mean for now as you can see yeah uh, indeed a, a a only 50 basis point rate hike is around uh, yeah at, at 72 75 percent it varies but uh, at around 75 percent at the moment a uh, 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 likelihood so um yeah i mean um keep in mind also that we have uh, still yeah, uh, one one more key CPI data release um, coming up for the month of November and just one day before the next FOMC meeting, 
which is taking place on December 14th. So um, this is going to be keep. And uh, yeah, we will keep you updated, of course, if anything extraordinary happens there. And uh, which, of course, re reminds me, uh, <laughs> if you if you like our ca content and so on, um, yeah, feel free to subscribe. Um, we also have some key uh, things coming up in the next little while so i'm currently working on some uh, interesting smaller videos um a little bit entertaining maybe but uh, also um you know educating um in, if you are interested in the day trading or trading environment in general so uh yeah don't miss out on that but um yeah um anyways let's move on from here in fact uh, yeah, now to I a market add to that yeah. as well i think i'll have to do some myself i was thinking <laughs> Maybe some yeah, tutorials yeah. Tutorials here, tutorials, something, just stuff like yeah, that. something just like added. that. Yeah, yeah, true. The actual so, trading videos seem to be a bit boring, and <laughs> nobody wants to. Nobody really yeah, cares. Though, I mean, the problem is trading is indeed boring, yeah. uh, relatively <laughs> boring. It should be boring, so it's yeah. not that. that uh, so maybe people don't um, don't see that, but it should be relatively boring. It's a lot of waiting mm -hmm. until uh, your price comes into your level, until it meets your criteria, yeah. um, and you have to be in a way. Uh, somewhat robotic uh in in your um I am in your still uh, execution that bigger picture treat though at least That's exactly gonna, yeah, exactly working on it it's gonna take some time but yeah yeah but yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Anyways, let's let's move on to a market indeed, which uh, I mean, we mentioned it last week already, um, but there's a little update or updates coming out of the um, oil market. Um, I mean, if you were trading crude oil, I mean, I warned you last last week already. Um, I think you enjoyed quite a lot of volatility last week, which should actually continue into this week. So, um, yeah, I got to admit, it was a little bit whipsaw, uh, I mean, price action wise last week because there were indeed rumors uh, reported by the Wall Street Journal about a potential yeah, oil pro production increase of around 500,000 uh, barrels a day by the OPEC nations to make up for the loss of the uh, yeah, Russian crude oil supplies. However, then Saudi Arabia came out um, and yeah, categorically denied those rumors. So um, th what happened was the Oil price just continued, um, yeah, in its uh, anticipated direction, mean, meaning it dumped quite heavily. But then Saudi Arabia um, came out and cushioned uh, somewhat that that uh, price drop. I mean, then we had a little bit of a reversal. Um, but in, indeed, the crude oil price, yeah, um, at a certain uh, at a certain point last week, fell to its lowest level since January, but then rebounded a bit after those Saudi comments. I mean, I just looked at the market at the moment. It's now continuing to dump and it's looking in my opinion uh, relatively dangerous if you're <laughs> bullish on, on crude oil but um, I'll leave that to Kiran I'm excited to see um, or to hear his comments on that um, and I mean interestingly we will see eventually see uh, if those rumors about that um, oil production increase from OPEC um, are for real on December 4th so mark that date on your calendar that's when the next OPEC plus meeting is taking place in Vienna. And furthermore, <laughs> um, just one day before um, the EU is going to introduce its embargo on Russian uh, crude oil shipments and further plans for the G7 countries to cap the Russian price of um, yeah, oil. So um, it's definitely or it'll definitely going to be a couple of relatively interesting weeks for the crude oil mar market. So be aware of that. And uh, I think lots of boom movement should be expected. And uh, as mentioned, I'm excited to hear what Kiran thinks about it in the charts. Um, but uh, yeah, and also I heard uh, just this morning that there were some pretty intense um, yeah, protests going on in China at the moment due to the uh, COVID restrictions. Which is, uh, yeah, interesting to see because, uh, as you as you know, uh, indeed, like critics of the of the of the yeah CCP or of the um, yeah of the President Xi Jinping um, are yeah not seen very well. It is actually forbidden to go out and say something against that guy or against the regime. So seeing those mass protests not only locally but um, yeah, in a way, in lots of uh, big cities around China is um, yeah, I'd say. Uh, interesting to see so that's also a catalyst um, a negative catalyst for the or potential negative catalyst for the crude market so beware of that watch out uh, if anything uh, comes out of there um and 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 see what what happens out of china since yeah as mentioned last week china is a big big player in the crude market demand wise and um yeah 
something uh, something a little bit of chaos happening there is obviously gonna bring bring a little bit of chaos also in the crude market or into the crude market so Apart from that, let's take a quick look at the uh, busy week we have ahead of us. So um, as you can see, first of all, we're going to start relatively slow today. We got only two um, yeah, two bankers speaking, one uh, coming out of the EU, one coming out of the US. So not big, uh, not, nothing really big expected in my opinion. But um, apart from that, tomorrow we have, um, yeah, the UK uh, or Bank of England governor speaking, but also the consumer confidence numbers coming out of the US. Apart from that, I think, um, yeah, the Wednesday and uh, I mean, from Wednesday to Friday, every day should be relatively busy, in my opinion. So watch out. I think we could get some uh, pretty, pretty hefty volatility. So c starting off on Wednesday, we have this, some CPI data coming out of Eurozone. But more important, we have uh, labor market data coming out of the US. So um, not only labor market data, but we have also preliminary GDP data coming out of the US home sales and finally we have our little slug <laughs> speaking uh at, at 1 30 p.m so um pointing out to the the thumbnail that i created so um yeah we have uh, fed chair jerome powell speaking on thursday we have the core pce price index so big inflation data that the fed is watching so watch out for that as well that should bring some um yeah some movement into the markets we have the weekly jobless claims manufacturing PMI data on Thursday. And finally, we have uh, the big non-farm payrolls data coming out of the US as well on Friday. So I think Wednesday to Friday, um, if you like well, volatility, <laughs> what we do as, as traders, I mean, I heard a sentence re recently, we are in a way slaves to volatility because um, yeah, if there's no volatility, there's no movement, there's no um, taking advantage of price action moves. So in a way, if the market is calm, uh, we have nothing to do. So, uh, but I think, yeah, if you are watching these three days, particularly, you should have a lot of fun in the markets, I'd say. Um, apart from that, let's move on to the charts because, um, yeah, interesting things are happening in the gold market. Um, so, um, on a weekly perspective, though, still um, a little bit, um, yeah, in defense, I have to say nothing really um, happened here. We, we're still, in a way, yeah, we're coming into this, um, yeah, range down here. I mean, I said, I want to see what happens down into the bottom of the range. If that was a fake out, I mean, we, we, we already had a chat about it. This was very um, suspicious here. So a stop run of a stop run. Uh, and then the market, uh, yeah, somebody was soaking up all the liquidity down here. And then we just, um, yeah, boosted higher here. Um, but now we're, I mean, I can't personally, if I'm like, if I would be invested in this asset, I can't be a buyer up here um, again. Just my opinion here. I'm not a financial advisor. You know, you know uh, um, the rules and so on. But um, yeah, this is, in my opinion, a bit too high for me personally. Um, and we are still, in my opinion, relatively bearish on this market. So um, and nothing has changed really for me on this um, on this uh, time frame. So um, yeah, still bearish. But some interesting things happened in the lower time frame so if we look at the daily chart i mean this market doesn't or didn't want to go down i mean I, I pointed it out um sellers tried to push it down they were chasing 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 finally they gave up and we had some pretty decent uh, buy stop releases to the upside so um now we are yeah we were coming into this big weekly area there was i think the puck around there on the weekly time frame um so we were coming into this area market got rejected um what we in a way yeah or was met with supply what we would expect so now i'd say it's gonna be important when what happens next can we now um yeah clear out that supply zone and march into our next supply zone and maybe if we can clear out that supply zone i mean that would be a pretty bullish sign for gold but that's still like uh, over a hundred bucks away from now but first area is we should clear out this supply zone and then i'd be saying hey um this market is a, indeed looking a bit strong here so i might join a little bit of a of a swing trade here but apart from that um yeah I can't really be a buyer here up here. It's it's in the middle of nowhere. I would actually um, entertain potentially a buy down here, 
But um, again, keeping in mind that the weekly time frame is still bearish. So um, that's that's a bit of a bummer, I'd say. But apart from that, um, I have a bit of a risk window down here. Um, I have a story down here due to previous price action, due to previous um, order flow and so on. Um, so I can at least um, yeah entertain something down here. Or we just, as mentioned, we crack that uh, bigger supply zone here, um, and then we can uh, we can potentially um, entertain a or I can potentially entertain along into the next supply zone. But um, yeah, being careful here. Um, but I mean, yeah, we're talking about now uh, a little bit higher time frame things. Um, if we look at the day trading time frames, um, it is looking a bit uh, good in in my opinion. So um, in fact, on the day trading time frame, we're talking about now, um, yeah. Um, a tick charts and, and and hourly charts and so on. I mean, it is looking pretty good in my opinion. So um, looking at that, I mean, I was pointing out that uh, that area last week and look at what happened. We just came down into this area. Uh, we didn't really spend too much time down here. Um, we actually got soaked up by uh, by demand down here. Demand just chased that market higher, um, and then we were now pointing higher here so i that's what i like to see in a in a day trading environment if i would be uh, bullish on gold um and um yeah this is this is looking very good i mean in fact i don't really know if we come back all the way down here like i, I want to see what happens today but i mean i would um yeah even entertain along maybe into these more aggressive areas into this 5630 or all the way down into this 47 uh, or 45, yeah, 46 area um, for now. But um, yeah, let's see what happens. But um, this is looking bullish. And in fact, um, yeah, if we can, like, I want to see what happens up into these areas. So these were those higher time frame areas I pointed out. But if we can crack those areas here, I mean, there's, yeah, there, there's still a lot more room to run for, for, for this market. But apart from this, I mean, take, I or I would be taking those, um, areas as profit opportunities so um, if we crack that level here nice give me an, a, a little bit more if we get rejected here we come down all the way down into these areas we're showing signs of weakness here then i'd be hands off but um, at this moment in time it's looking uh, yeah encouraging for me so um, yeah i'm gonna see what happens this afternoon or tomorrow but um, yeah, looking looking good and i mean if if we come down here and we don't show any more buyers here we don't uh, in this let's say, let's call it a zone. Um, I'd be a bit more careful, and if we break that level, I'd be even a little bit more careful, and would probably even yeah in the shorter time frames uh, flip to the bear side. Um, yeah, to take some shorts back into those areas where I expect demand again to step into the market. So taking it level by level in the day trading environment, and um, yeah, don't looking for those huge runners. Uh, which may become, but probably not. Don't come because usually, um, yeah, the market usually is very, very quick in these day trading environments. So um, you gotta have a plan in place to take profits. You don't want to see those uh, those <laughs> those moves come all the way down and stop you out at scratch or even at a loss. <laughs> so crude that... oil showed us last week. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So um, up five thousand dollars in the trade. Down ten thousand uh, dollars in the trade. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. So it just needs some person. Some institution, uh, some country to come out and say something. Um, and if you if you then still are married to your position and you're 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 thinking still thinking, hey, this is going to going to go to the moon, no new all time highs and and so on. Uh, I mean, then probably uh, more often than not, the market just uh, slaps you in the face and comes all the way back. So, um, having a proper exit strategy in place, exit management in place to ensure that you take your profits what you where you should do. Uh, and uh, not letting emotions kick in, as we had a chat about it earlier, and um, and, and trying to cut those short, or, uh, or or let those losers run, and so on, and all those things, um, yeah, is key in this game. And um, yeah, I hope you're, uh, yeah, you're taking advantage of those moves. And um, yeah, apart from that, that is it from me. Again, watch out for those fundamental events. Lots of things coming up. Manage your risk, please. Um, it, there should be volatility opportunity but also a risk involved so uh, keep that in mind um, be careful in this in these environments and apart from that we should have fun in the markets this week i'd say um yeah that's it from my side 
Um, I hope you enjoy the rest of the week. Thank you for watching. Um, uh, thank you, Coast, for being here always. Um, and um, yeah, apart from that, have a nice trading week. I'm out of here. Bye, everybody. Hey, excellent. Now, let me switch over the camera. I suppose I better sit up and <laughs> a bit lazy after a couple of days off here. I'm going to start off slow this week, I think. <laughs> I basically finished my trading week Wednesday, I believe. Yeah, Wednesday. And this is the first day back. So I uh, haven't really even been looking at the computer. Uh, so good. All right. As always, we'll kick it off here with ES and we'll get to Bitcoin via crude oil. So um, starting as Daniele did with gold here. Actually, quick look at the cut report for gold. Um, give you a quick insight. Is there anything to note in that? No, nothing to note from the, the cut report from gold here flat from last week. So no big changes in that guy. Perfect. Back to ES here. So ES has closed yet again another weekly. As you can see, we had that doji. We closed back above. Actually, there's something to know. Did we take out that high? No, we didn't take out that high just yet. So we're a little, still actually a little bit indecision here, as you can see on ES. We didn't manage to break above that doji high. You could call this a range here. We break in either direction. That may be um, um, information of where we're going next. Now, we'll see on the lower time frames a little bit for CRISPR. Look, that's just a simple approach there. Um, as we are looking currently, we did break above this 76.50 area again. Sorry, close above this 76.50 area. And it seems like we're still not accelerating up into this 100 area. That's what I would like to see or expect when we have this low volume area, although we are starting to maybe fill out a little bit here. So it's looking like the potential um, we are going to get maybe stuck in here and maybe range until something changes or until that indecision in the market changes or something fundamentally shifts as the market finds and uh, has found a balance area or a, an area of currently fair value as it goes back and forth in its price discovery process in this area. Again, early signs of weakness is going to be back below, closing on a weekly basis that 76.50 area, looking to see what happens at the pack here and ultimately onwards and downwards level by level on the weekly time frame. We're still bearish on the weekly time frame, obviously, until at least we do some more damage to the upside, but we're starting to, again, attempt at that. Next level of bullishness is going to be cracking above that 104, accepting above that 104 area, and then ultimately maybe doing some uh, challenging up into this most recent supply zone. If and when that scenario plays out, we'll discuss that a little bit further, but that is going to be a major, major bullish signal from the market if and when it does happen. So a long way off just yet though. So let's take a look at the daily here. As you can see, we are attempting to put in some higher highs and higher lows on the daily time frame here. Um, we're still not by any means bullish here, but we're trending in a bullish stance, we'll say. So we're higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows, higher highs. Um, can we continue to put in higher lows, sorry, higher highs and higher lows? Or does this start to roll over and start to put some pressure back on the downside, making yet again another bigger picture lower high here before continuing lower? Therefore, obviously, um, breaking that 4300 and breaking that kind of early shift or that trend shift here above that 4327 that is going to be a major um, signal again uh, from the daily time frame for the bulls potentially taking this market over and then we want to see that pullback then obviously put in that higher low and then we really really start to shift gears into that early signs of a bullish shift in the market this again is early stages we're coming into there's a big trend line running down here there's early stages of um, weakness again in line with that you wouldn't want to be a buyer here you want to wait for a pullback into an area of interest and then look to get on board currently actually uh this 13 obviously level this previous demand zone is going to be a major level to look for that long side i will be paying close attention myself personally below that is going to be a massive warning sign in fact that would be a strong indication that this is turning out to be yet again a lower high a little bit of a double top coming into play here closing a daily back below that 39 13 25 is going to be a major warning signal for the bulls here and we'll see what happens next obviously what's leading into that it seems everybody is like the fed is going to pivot the, the, the world is crumbling yet again or the, 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 the everything is going to be falling apart inflation's coming down um so the, the fed is going to pivot but uh, and that's going to be bullish for markets okay um yes in the short term the build-up to a fed pivot is actually bullish <laughs> so great uh maybe the fed pivot not so much the, the Fed, um, uh, we say the Fed pause actually is bullish for markets. The Fed pause is bullish for markets. The Fed pivot 
is actually a major pivot, meaning it's going to start dropping interest rates, is actually a major, major warning sign. And that is uh, the early stage, and if not already beginning, the next phase of the bear market. So be careful on that one, how you interpret the, everybody talking about the pivot. The pivot, the pivot, the pivot, that's bullish, that's bullish, bullish. No, the pause, yes, is, bu is bullish because obviously we get a short-term uh, uh, release continuation of these pressures that have been overwhelming uh, the markets and so on and so forth. But actually a Fed pivot means that they've done as they've intended to do, which is to break something. Um, uh, uh, i.e. global world economy <laughs> um, and by breaking the global world economy they're obviously going to have to um, take action on that by dropping interest rates and the fact that they've broken the world economy basically means that they're more than likely after going to do some damage across the world and markets are going to start to price that in uh, <laughs> pretty quickly once that's realized normally before the fact so be careful on that one. This is, yes, you don't want to fight this rally, don't get me wrong. It is showing signs of bullishness and I'm participating myself personally. But when it turns around, again, the gates may open quite quickly. So just be careful from a risk perspective, from a management perspective, how you uh, approach the markets in that respect. A lot of people are speculating maybe early next year, maybe, maybe Q2 next year. Again, nobody can actually time when, but uh, if and when. That scenario plays out. Yeah, you want to be careful with how you're positioning risk assets, uh, of course. So I uh, just wanted to put that out there. Um, anyways, below this 39.13 doesn't mean that can happen. That, 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 that doesn't happen today, that people don't start to price in today. But obviously, as the CPI comes down, people are going to get uh, excited and start to take risk on board as they believe the inflation uh, picture is gone. Now, anyways, I'm getting off and again on a tangent here. Just keeping an eye on the macro, of course, is important. So anyway, from a price action perspective, closing dailies back below that 39.13.25 is going to be an early warning signal from the market. And if we do actually close back below this um, 37.23.75, that's going to seal the fate for the rally in the short term for me. I expect this then to go into its next leg to the downside if and when we do get daily closes back below that 37.23.75. Now, we're a long way off that. And as I said, pullbacks are actually buying opportunities. And this is going to be the first area of interest to look for the pullbacks. Below that guy, I will be looking for shorts down into this area, given the trend, the higher time frame trend, obviously the bear side is in. But at the moment, I am not hunting shorts at the, at the present, even though we may put in a double tap here. Actually waiting for whatever counter trend move to play out. Looking for that support to come in and looking to get on board alongside is going to be the best way to play the game currently until we start to invalidate some of these levels as mentioned. So if we don't get back down into this area of interest for that buy, obviously breaking back above that 4016 as we felt the close we did close above but we're getting rejected now these days obviously the, the you know the holiday season and so on and so forth you know i don't want to rely too much on this data personally therefore if we do come back down here we find some support in no man's land we might see in the four hour now in a second if there's a clear level in here if there is looking for that support to continue looking to break back above that 1625 and actually looking for that next leg up into that kind of 100 level even aligning with the weekly and so on and so forth and then maybe onwards and upwards let's see what happens if and when we do get that scenario but again keeping in mind that wherever this rally ends at some point it will end <laughs> so uh, having your risk reward in your favor with that information is of course best not to chase all right here we go actually the level seems to be the same for the four hour um yeah 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 it is it is i have some minor levels but we won't talk about those today they're they're in between these levels here from a day trading perspective at the moment um yeah the, the day trading i don't know let me let me get the four hour levels on first that might help there we go <laughs> got some intermediary levels in here okay from a four hour perspective actually i remain bullish on the four hour time frame um longer than you would expect so uh, yes there is weakness back below that that daily level at the 39 25 but much in line with the daily i don't actually get bearish on the four hour and the daily until we start getting down below this zone here i have this zone here between we call it 37.50 and that daily level there at that 37.23.75 if we first off get four hour closes below that 37.50, that's going to be that early sign of weakness. And then looking for that to either lead into that daily weakness or still even looking for that support to come back in, looking for that fail to go lower and looking for that bounce continuation for that next leg to the downside is obviously going to be a pretty good area to consider putting risk on. Much in line, as I said, in here. And as I said just a second ago, maybe we don't get, as we are currently getting supply here below that level. Um, as you can see, oh, as you can see, but does this continue again kind of holiday malaise does this continue or is this just pulling back for for um for lower prices to accumulate 
Uh, my first minor level in here, as you can see, is at this 7450 here. This, this is, a, this is um, it's not a very important level, but it's a, it's a level nevertheless. So watching for this potential support to come in at this level and then looking for that next leg back to the upside, you know, cracking above on the four hour, back above that 1625, looking for it to hold like it did here. You want to see that demand chasing it once we do get that close above and then actually looking for that next leg to the upside as opposed to this lower high, you know, in this low liquidity environment. So um, watching what happens, listening to the information from the market as it comes in and then looking to position ourselves accordingly as a result, um, you know, reading the market like a book as we do here at Trader Dynamics, as you will see. I mean, this was here last week prior to this tag, if I'm not mistaken. And this level here at the 4016 is also a major level of interest. Um, again, very easy to find out, dig into them, go and back trace through them and you might get some information from it. There are intricacies around it based on uh, certain data that we have, of course. So anyway, long story short, let's continue with a quick look at the Russell to see if there anything. Russell is actually weaker, as you can see here, putting in a much more muted bounce here and looking uh, well, again, from a current, from, from a Russell perspective, is it leading, is ES leading it? They, they, they flip back and forth, of course. But seeing this, you know, um, more strength actually previously, now we're seeing more weakness as we kind of put in this this um, um, bounce here. Is this yet a dead cat, another dead cat bounce here in the market? Maybe, a lot, a lot to say it might be. We obviously we want to wait for more information as it comes in. But if we get back down here and we fail to hold, um, again, looking at this from an information perspective, and maybe that next leg to the downside comes a bit sooner than we expect. Or looking at that potential as the Russell weakness maybe comes in or does not come in. And much like that, uh, the strength, early strength, if we do manage to start close dailies back above this guy or even four hours back above this guy. And then looking for that to continue higher, um, maybe before ES does it. Uh, let's see what happens as that data comes in. But again, nothing really else to report from that guy. There was nothing uh, really on the ES cut report again either. Actually, much, much in line with the kind of holiday week. There was no big positioning, I guess, across these markets in, in, in most of the, in all of them. In fact, no big changes in here, no big differences from the, the week prior. So uh, not a lot to say on that one. All right, back to crude oil here. Uh, crude oil, as you can see, is falling off a cliff. Basically, um, we have closed uh, the weekly last week below our level here at the we'll call it 77. As we expect, if we do close below this guy. This is going to open up to the downside. It looks like we are currently opening up to the downside. Um, we have this POC here. Where do we say it was? It was at, uh, we'll call it, we'll call it 7180. So around the 7180, 72 area, we have a POC in here. There's a big POC for this entire move here. What happened? This is, you know, we're not going to, again, anything can happen, of course, but I don't expect us just to slice straight through this guy. I think this is going to be a pretty significant area to pay attention to. Maybe even options, a little bit of a fade bounce or whatever bounce we do get off this area, waiting for that to exhaust itself and looking to continue that lower is obviously going to be the best game to play. But um, this is going to be considered for this entire range here, as you can see, this entire up move since 2021 here, from February 2021 here, this is where the accumulation began. So this is where everybody that bought oil, uh, this is where the majority of people throughout this entire move here, this is where the majority of people bought oil. So are those guys still going to be there? Are they still interested in buying oil when it gets back down here? And this is just fluff. So uh, did anybody who sold up here, are they looking to reaccumulate down in these areas? That's all potential, of course. Um, and we'll see what happens if and when we do get down here. Obviously, continued weakness is what's expected. But again, I can't actually call a full bear market state on crude oil on a weekly time frame till we start to close below that 62 area. Below 62 area, we're probably going to go into an extended crude oil bear market or bear market state. Again, much in line with the global backdrop, a redu reduction in demand for products and goods and services and so on and so forth based on recessionary pressures. It kind of is expected in the crude oil market to go into that kind of softness. And I expect this to continue based on that. But this isn't just going to go straight there like markets never go straight up, no straight down. It's going to be a little bit of a bounce in this area. So pay attention to that. Um, obviously, if we do come down here, bounce and we start to close back above this 77 area, that's going to be, again, uh, uh, continued potential strength here. And we may even rally all the way back up and do some damage level by level. Even when we do do that, I mean, who knows what happens? Maybe there's some massive supply shock and we turn around and go straight back up again. Anything is possible, of course. And we're looking at these areas of interest for signs of that and trading it appropriately, of course. Um, so let's take a look at the weekly here. Sorry, the daily here <laughs> as we march our way lower. So again, we have just continued to, we have tried to go higher, much actually kind of similar, uh, 
all markets are the same, you know, price action never lies and so on and so forth. Try to put in a dead cap bounce, try to break and hold structure to the upside from a strength and demand perspective. Found demand in an area of interest, broke higher, found supply in that previous supply zone and put in now a lower low. So <laughs> we have invalidated that level. As you can see, this 81.20, as we mentioned here, if we start to close dailies back below that level last week, this is going to be a massive, massive warning sign. Not only that, we want to see those dailies close and fail to find demand below that level, which is what happened. And in fact, what happened, which we expect for that continuation play, which is what we got, supply comes down on top of our level and it continues to push the market lower. That's exactly what happened. Playbook, uh, almost like the crystal ball, you know, can see the future. Obviously, we're playing probabilities. We're not playing, uh, we're not playing certain certainties. But nevertheless, if you do have certain information in line appropriately, it can lead to um, massive, massive areas where you can really, really reduce your risk window for potential participation in the market, which is what we want to do from a trading perspective. It's not about what we can make in the trade. It's about how little we can risk for a bigger gain. <laughs> um, that is the game, of course. So anyways, that is where we're looking at the moment. Continuation to the downside, pullbacks to find opportunities, even pullbacks back up into this most recent supply zone here at that 8120 is going to be a massive opportunity. We're going to see some more in the four hour in a second. This is going to be a key, key area to pay attention to for that pullback, for that continuation lower. And in fact, if we close today below that 7423, that's going to be the continuation level. And I will be paying close attention for that, for the aggressive trade actually continuing this lower down into our next levels of interest, level by level. If and when we do get that close below that 7423, we'll see some more levels on the four hour in a second. But that is um, um, a potential play as well if we don't get that bounce that we want. Um, if we do, however, pull back and we break back and close dailies back above this 8120, well, this could be just a little bit of a head fake to the downside and we will maybe look for that continuation or we would wait and see what happens when it happens, looking for that expected bounce to continue higher. But again, by no means are we bullish in any way, shape or form until at least we can break up uh, uh, back above this supply zone, call it what, 93-ish, whatever, whatever these guys are in at, what are these guys in at, these highs are in here somewhere at around... So as we're trying now we'll call it 93.50 in around that area until we start to close dailies back above that 93.50 area there is no reason to be calling this a bull in any way shape or form and trading with the short side is going to be the easiest way to play this game currently this is daily time frame of course so waiting again like i said a bit late to be shorter right now tomorrow when we close whenever we close if we close below that 74.23 and then looking for whatever pullback to come back into our area of interest that's different to trying to short the lows at present because we could very easily quick out here, close this in a big hammer candle, and that would be a bullish sign, obviously, that the demand is stepping up into the market. So we want to wait for that to happen or whatever counter trend rally to exhaust itself and then look to get on board on the short side when we get that counter trend rally, of course. Looking to sell the bottom is never a good idea. Um, of course, pretty retail thing to do. All right, let's take a look. Um, four hour levels. Let's get them on, I suppose, my help. <coughs> Four hour levels, a little bit more noisy as you can see, but data points for information nevertheless. So, uh, where are we on the four hour perspective? Yeah, four hour, a little bit different. I probably have to, actually, I probably have to adjust a few of these. These are a bit, uh, let, me, let me come back here and adjust these guys. This guy is a little bit better now. Okay, let me adjust this guy. This guy's a little bit better here. Where is it? somewhere in this area there we go all righty so adjusting that guy uh, we have new levels to play with from the four hour perspective um let's close this real quick as you can see actually back uh, to where we are at present we are closing that four hour below here as you can see failed to close below hammered out below there is actually signs here on the four hour time frame back in line with the daily actually at uh, the day trading environment again to look for that short potential now that we've got that bounce i mean the lows here uh, the lows here are 7360, 70, we'll call it 7430. So you're looking at a good, what, 70 points, a 70 ticks of a move there if we do get that pullback into this area and we do see that weakness. Again, we want to see that continued weakness to come in here. We want to see that four hour fail to close above that level. So looking for that weakness close to that is going to be a data point that we want to pay attention to um, and maybe looking to get on board for that aggressive short continuation on the four hour time frame. Again, paying attention to the potential for that daily invalidation of course um, again but staying on the short side of course is the right side and into major levels this being the most aggressive on that retrace up here looking for that continuation lower down into some of these lower levels now 
if we do close a four hour above that, obviously all um, all shorts are off the table in the short term. <laughs> Until we get that deeper pullback, that is an early sign of strength or failing to continue lower from this from this exact point of interest. Um, and looking for that pullback up into some of these more um, important levels, I would say personally, I'm liking this 77 levels, you know, in line with all the major levels. This level is going to be a major, major level for that continuation short, or at least looking for that weakness to come in and looking for that continuation lower in this area. That's 77 being that major level on the, was it the daily actually, or was it the weekly? I think it was the weekly. Uh, yeah, the 77 was that weekly level. So there we go. So looking for that weekly level too continue to um, show that weakness uh, uh, and push that supplier, that supply to step up in this area, push this market lower. That's going to be a key. I would be happy to get a short in this area. Massive, massive risk reward in that case. If we do get back up into that area, paying attention to these still, but um, not having that same risk reward, even up into this 79, and we call it what, 80, up into that 80, big fat round number, um, 80 level, that's going to be a major, major level. If this, um, if this guy fails, if this 77 fails, and we do get a bit higher in the short term, uh, watching this 80 level this most recent area of supply is obviously going to be key looking for that fail to close above that level and then looking to get on board the short side for the next leg to the downside you know the further further away you can get from that uh, the further or the closer you can get to your invalidation level the better it is from a risk reward perspective and this being my current invalidation level a four hour close above that guy is going to be short term pause on the bull side and I would look to expect um, the bounce to continue maybe up into some of these higher time frame levels yet again if and when we do get that four hour close above that area. But that is a big stretch at this case. Again, I think it can happen, especially in crude oil. You can get these guys <laughs> lots, to, lots of uh, volatility uh, from last week. Um, each one of these candles, I believe, was in and around the 5,000 mark. What, 75, 30 to, yeah, 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 80, 80, 50, 80, 40. So exactly five grand, give or take. Uh, down and exactly five or grand, give or take, back to the upside there. So <laughs> interesting moves, nevertheless. Um, so keeping that in mind, anything can happen. And having that four-hour close above that 79.90 is going to be a, a, a tick in the bull camp for me personally. And I will be back on actually chasing some of the long side to the upside, even when that happens, watching for the pullbacks to actually put in some demand structure and then looking to get on board for the next leg to the upside keeping the risk reward in my favor of course um again so that, that's a bit of a stretch but always best to cover it somewhat neutrally um given the fact that the market goes up and the market goes down so and anything can change at any time so uh, we always want to uh, not get too much of a bias even though obviously staying with the trend the trend is your friend and all that fun stuff waiting for whatever weakness to come in and looking to get on board the short side is going to be the best place to play the game these are my current areas of interest, one, two, three, four, um, for the short side. So waiting for those levels, doing nothing in between, waiting for your levels to be triggered, of course, is going to be the easiest way to play. And then look for the weakness to come in. That's where the edge is in your favor. That's where the risk reward is in your favor. Doing anything outside those levels, as tempting as it may be from time to time, is not in your best interest. <laughs> as you may learn from experience or... <laughs> from never if you don't uh, do what you're supposed to do from a trading perspective get better every day of course all right enough ranting let's go back to the cot report i don't think there's any big changes in this guy either nah nothing really big in this guy either yeah nah muted nothing yeah nothing to report here realistically from last week either so let's get into magic internet money bitcoin bitcoin still Probably going to probably over the next while, whether, whether it goes lower, whether our little fun from last week, our floor here from last week is actually going to be a floor or not. Whatever is going to happen over the next while, Bitcoin and these markets are probably going to drive everybody, everybody demented as the volatility just evaporates. <laughs> Nobody is interested in participating in these markets um, because of obviously the global macro, how, how bad it will get given the global macro, time will tell. But um, I would expect this is probably going to bore people after that by the end of it. So um, keeping all that in mind, uh, again, I still think there should be a decent, decent opportunity if we do get lower here. Again, we're kind of boring people to that in this current little area we are at the moment. It is being chased to the downside here. So there is a heavy supply still pushing, trying to push the market lower here. So be, be cognizant of that. Um, nevertheless, I expect some sort of a decent floor to come in in this zone down here on the monthly. Nothing has changed here realistically on the monthly time frame. We've, we're, we're a couple of days away from closing down here. So that's going to be a big, big um, signal from the monthly close here that supply is definitely the one in control here, as you can see. And given that risk on environment, there might be a little bit of a bounce uh, at the minute, but that is by no means uh, um, a new bull market. Again, this is probably going to play out much like the rest of the world uh, from a, 
a, a recessionary environment. Again, we, yeah, time will tell. We'll be paying attention to the price. Come and listen. When it changes, we'll be paying attention. Doesn't mean I'm not positioning to play the game as we speak. I'm currently in Bitcoin, for, uh, like, like I mentioned last week, from down in this area here. But that's a long-term play. This is this is you know slowly uh, uh, putting a very very small percentage into this asset because it's cheap <laughs> i expect at some point in the future it probably won't be cheap so uh, that's all it's not so much a trade that's not to say i won't be actually i wouldn't let it go if we did have a decent rally here and we, we were looking for some weakness to come in that's not to say i wouldn't trade it but just that uh, from this perspective this very very small percentage you would say that i'm holding um, uh, um is is a is, is um, a long-term play nevertheless Let's see. Again, I want it to come lower because I want to buy more, cheaper, um, put it away into cold storage like I did with that. You know, so I'm looking as it gets down into these areas is going to be key. But as you can see, I mean, we're not doing any damage from a demand perspective by any means. I'm waiting what happens when we get down into these zones of interest is going to be key. So next, again, 14 to 12 and a half, 9 to whatever that was there. I don't know. So the pock here, what is it? 9 to, yeah, 9, 9, 8. We call it 10 to 9. Nine to ten thousand dollars key floor, and it's anywhere in between here, basically, or twelve to twelve and a half. Sorry, fourteen to twelve and a half. There's going to be major areas to pay attention. Maybe some um, DCA, and if you're not a trader, and so on and so forth. And then eventually, when we do turn around, um, start to position deeper. If we do, so if we say we fail to go lower here, currently a turnaround for me. Uh, early signs of strength is obviously going to be back above most recent supply zone, but ultimately back above. We'll call it twenty five. Um, it's going to be a major. We'll see in a lower time frame there in a second where, where that starts to come into play. But again, there's no, I, for me personally, I don't think there's a whole point in really discussing the bull side on a weekly time frame at the minute. Back above the supply zone here, what are we talking? We're talking back above 21 and a half. That's going to be a big, big signal from the market that there is strength creeping back in. But we want to see that continue. You know, it's again, if it does, it's probably going to drive people a little bit mad like that. But if we do get a higher high in place, want to see that higher low come into place and we want to see that potential shift in trend and then start to really, really consider the bull side. Now, that's not to say that that doesn't become the case from here. Again, anything can happen. But at the moment, it's looking less likely and we're looking like we're getting ready for that next leg down into maybe some of these lower zones of interest. Again, we want to take it as it comes as opposed to saying it has to do this, it has to do that. We want to, we want to wait and see what the market gives us as opposed to what we expect the market to do. Um, and participate accordingly. So let's take a look at the lower time frames to see can we do that and now as we speak. So has anything shifted in here? Mm, no. This is a daily time frame. Has anything changed since last week? No. <laughs> Excuse me for a second. <clears throat> so as you can see, given that big capitulation bounce now, that doesn't mean we're not close to a low. We're definitely, definitely closer to a low than we are. Uh, again, not a, uh, not financial advice, but um, if I was buying this asset, it's definitely much better to be buying this asset now than it was at 70k <laughs> for obvious reasons. Uh, um, now, we did have a capitulation event, a high volume event down here, as we mentioned. That was my reason for actually taking my first little stab um, at, at accumulating here. <clears throat> but since that event, we are descending here. We're lower lows, uh, sorry, lower highs, lower highs. Now, we haven't convincingly broken the lows just yet. If and when that scenario plays out, obviously the continued expectation increases exponentially. Uh, the, conti uh, the, conti the expectation of continuation increases exponentially. But until that happens, we may, I mean, we, we may just drive people mad. Everyone is saying, it's going to 10K, it's going to 14K, it's going to 16K, it's going to, oh, sorry, we're at 16K, it's going to 14K, it's going to 10K. Doesn't have to happen. I mean, it doesn't have to happen. It, can it happen? Absolutely. But I want to be prepared for the fact uh, that it may not happen. And of course, if it does, great, we get cheaper Bitcoin. But if it doesn't, and we turn around here, I want to be ready to participate if and when we turn around. Um, given that information, obviously, breaking the lows, continuation is expected down into the next level of interest, down into this 13, we call it 14,000 area. Below that guide, next level to the downside, and so on and so forth. Pretty straightforward. So, if we don't go lower, what, what can we expect from the market? If we don't go lower and we do manage to get back above, actually, we call it 18.5 is going to be a major area to pay attention to. 18.5, but let's make it easier. Let's call it 18.659 <laughs> so, as an early specific level of interest. If we break back above $18,659, that is going to be a major, major 
uh, um, sign of strength for me. And I would expect it to then lead higher up into this 21.5. We'll call it 21,478 and 80 cents. Back above on a daily closing basis above that 21,478 and 80 cents. That is going to be a major, major bullish signal for the market. And I will be aggressively starting to participate in this market on pullbacks, buying all coins, doing all the fun stuff that we do in a bull market. Again, cautiously, if it is, you know, just a bull market rally, I'll be positioning on the bull side. That does not mean I'll be setting it and forgetting it. I'll be managing risk accordingly and we'll be tracking that and we'll be kind of publishing, uh, posting videos and so on and so forth when we do. So this is our major area currently. We've 21,478.80. Closing dailies above that guy. I'm watching for demand to start to push this market higher after that scenario plays out is going to be the key current data point to pay attention to. That will shift if and when we do continue lower. But as we speak, that is going to be my major daily level to, uh, to pay attention to. That doesn't mean we're out of the woods, obviously taking a level level on the bullish stance as we grind our way higher but that would be a major major hurdle in fact getting above this 18 is going to be a major hurdle for me personally um on the bitcoin window and i will be looking to get on board for the expectation that we may continue higher that's going to be a trade though i'm going to be putting on big size with that expectation and i'm going to be holding that until i see weakness that does not and, and if the weakness doesn't come in that may roll into a bigger longer term position but we want to see that happen first um, and manage our risk accordingly, given that is our job after all. OK, let's get into the four hour here and see if we get any uh, additional insight or additional um, information from this guy. Yeah, a little bit more noisy here. So um, early signs of that potential coming into play, that daily potential coming into play is if we start to close four hours above. 16 8 to 17 thousand we start to close as you can see the supply is just relentless in this area currently the zone here we'll call it between 16 5 and 16 8 if we can uh, uh, overwhelm that supply that's going to be a shift in the dynamics of the market and we want to pay attention to the shifts in the dynamics of the market the supply and demand dynamics so uh, when that happens closing four hours above there that means that there is now signs that there is more demand in the market than there was recently supply that is an early sign of the shift in the market. Um, when we get that shift, that is going to be worth paying attention to. And I will, again, much in mind, as I said a minute ago, start to position accordingly if and when that scenario plays out. Again, paying attention to all the macro and so on and so forth. But the price action is the important thing. Perception, how this asset is going to perform in those environments, we don't know yet. So uh, uh, positioning accordingly. So the bull scenario is closing the four hours above, we call it 17,000 to make it easy. Closing four hours above the 17,000, I'm watching for the pullback to see demand come in and push this market higher, maybe up into um, breaking or pushing into some of those daily invalidation levels. If we start to see that unravel into the higher time frames in that bullish um, circumstance, that is going to be information we want to pay attention to and position accordingly from a trading perspective. That's what I will be doing anyways. Forget about the noise, the news, the doom, the gloom. We have to go here, we have to go there. That's how I will position based on the market generated information that's coming in. Um, ah, that doesn't mean it has to go higher. That doesn't mean there won't be weakness further on. And it doesn't mean we can't roll over and come back and do a new, uh, put in a whole new low. That does not mean any of that circumstance can play out. It's just what we have to deal with in the moment. Um, and do we spill to a new low? Who knows? But as we speak, that's not going to be the case because we are failing to do any of that. And in fact, we're, as you can see, pressing lower and lower and lower here. Lower, lower means people who are willing to sell believe they're not going to get that higher price and they're chasing it a little bit lower, chasing it a little bit lower. Get me out a little bit of panic. Get me out, get me out. Okay, we're still seeing demand stepping up in here, but there is fear for sure in the market and somebody is trying to get out of a position as calmly and as, as best as they possibly can, it would appear. Now, let's see what happens next. First level to the downside. Again, I'm not looking to buy it anymore in this, in this area, but watching for demand to show up in the next level to the downside. Ultimately, watching for demand to show up the level to the downside. And then, obviously, when we break the lows, we've already discussed in the four hour, even early, early stages of four hour close below that, then we will expect that then to actually continue lower, as we've already discussed. And as you can see, we're basically in no man's land here. We are failing to find demand, but there, and even though su supply is pressing the market lower, it is also running out of business. So do we just go asleep here and spend the next maybe a couple of little spikes down lower and so on and so forth, but just 
spend months just doing this and just driving everybody mad and then eventually someday out of the blue when everybody turns off their computers and all is gone and the world is crumbling and everything is coming to an end suddenly you'll wake up and you'll find bitcoin above twenty-five thousand, and it'll be like pop <laughs> and everybody who thought the world had sold the bottom and thought the world was coming to an end will be kicking themselves and they'll be like hey ah damn i did it. i got stopped out bazillion times trying to play these lower time frames and getting uh, bored to death they'll wake up it'll be above twenty-one thousand five hundred. like oh no it's going to the moon i missed out i missed out i missed out and they start chasing it higher and then of course we turn back potentially into a new bull market state and then as everybody buys up here it'll go for one last swim to the downside it'll rip everybody's heart out one last time and then eventually turn back up into a new bull market as the markets love to cause as much as a uh, pain for the maximum amount of people as they say so keeping all that in mind paying attention to what is uh, been told by the price action will keep you out of all that trouble um, or just stay tuned to us if you don't want to go down the road to learn to do it for yourself and we will at least keep you somewhat informed for the uh, higher time frames anyways uh, somewhat higher time frames if you want to call a four hour or higher time frame i guess <laughs> yeah so that is it from us today hopefully a little bit of fun a little bit of uh, rambling and a little bit of perspective on the markets as well until next week stay tuned for the releases of those specials that will be popping out every now and again try and uh, grow a little bit of interest in the channel and then um, save the boring stuff this once a week kind of boring thing that we, we put out there for those of you who are already kind of understanding markets and then maybe um, um, getting a little bit of perspective to help you grow as well as a trader so that's it from us here today from trader dynamics we wish you all a great week ahead and we will talk to you all very soon bye everyone